Tambaku Concepto. I'm sure many of you are familiar with time signatures. I'm also sure that many of you know that you can change time signatures throughout a song. What if we bridged those time signatures together with a common factor of some sort? It's a little hard to explain, but it's called metric modulation, and it's one of the coolest things that I've ever heard. Here is one of the image songs from the anime Tari Tari. <laughs> I'm gonna play this again, and this time I'm gonna count. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, 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 two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. Nicholas Slonimsky, who was a composer and music theory author in the uh, 1900s, defined metric modulation as a technique in which rhythmic pattern is super posed on another heterometrically and then supersedes it and becomes the basic meter. So this verse is in 4-4 four, four time and the pre-chorus is in 6-8 time. You might also call it a fast 3-4 time, but I'm just gonna go with 6-8 for now. You might have noticed that the uh, tempo changed between these two uh, time signatures and it has much a much bigger impact than if the uh, the, the tempo is consistent, and that's what that's the whole uh, reason for what I'm talking about. Um, it's not just a change in meter; you're also changing the tempo, but it's kind of interlinked with the uh, preceding tempo. And I'm going to show you why. You can actually start counting in the new time signature before you get to it. The triplets become the new eighth notes. So, how does this work? In 1975, Alan Winnold studied this concept and uh, he came up with a formula to make this work. The new tempo divided by the old tempo is equal to the number of pivot notes in the new measure divided by the number of pivot notes in the old measure. So let's take a quarter note, okay? Um, you could do this with any note value, but quarter notes are uh, easily divisible in both of these time signatures, so it's just easy to work with. The verse of this song is about 120 beats per minute. If you just plug these values into the formula, um, there are four quarter notes in um, the, the old time signature, and in the new section that we're leading into, there are three quarter notes per bar. Um, so that's three over four. Um, the old tempo is 120 beats per minute, so that leaves one value left. And so using a little bit of math, we can solve for the new tempo, and we come up with 90 beats per minute. So the uh, pre-chorus is in 6-8 time at 90 beats per minute. And that's, that's the important part, and this, that's the reason why this sticks out so much and why it's got such a big impact. The tempo shifts, and you, you notice the speed change, but it's something that you can actually measure out beforehand. And I think maybe it's just because I like to analyze things, but... Uh, I think that's really, really cool. Um, the same thing happens in reverse when the chorus starts. You uh, go from 6-8 time back into common time. You can actually keep the same rhythm going the entire time. Uh, it's really cool to be counting it out and watch it go out of sync and then back into sync as you continue to count. Metric modulation works with any time signature. 6-8 and 3-4 are probably the most common based on what I've seen, but you can do this with any time signature and come up with a lot of crazy stuff. Before I end this video, I'd like to announce that Ongaku Concept is partnering with Anime Instrumentality. Anime Instrumentality is a blog dedicated to anime music uh, reviews and news. They're pretty awesome, and I'm going to start doing some music theory related posts on there. So it would be really great if you checked that out. Um, the website is animeinstrumentality.net. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.